Welcome to the K-pop cast. I'm your K-pop DJ, DJ Peter Lowe, and I'm joined by our behind the scenes K-pop cast member, Raman. Hey, what's up, Peter? Great to be back. Yes, great to have you back on the show. And today we'll be reviewing Mama Moo's Starry Night. Letting you know if the song is debak or not. But before we get to Mama Moo, let's dive into our hit replays. Replay, replay. What's making you hit replay this week, Peter? My hit replay is Haiz and her song Jenga. Or is it Hayes? I'm sorry. I'm I'm like I love her, but I'm mispronouncing her name. So Hayes, Haiz okay. fans, tell me what it actually is. But Jenga is this beautiful blend of jazz inspired sounds. And that's really all you need to take away from it. It's also a very fun, visually appealing music video, very provocative. This and her other song. I'm not sure what they're trying to say, but that doesn't matter just because it sounds so beautiful. So, Raman, what's making you hit replay? I have to say, definitely Big Bang, Flower Road. The song was released today, um, Uh and it's kind of a gift for the fans, um, with four of the members recently enlisting. And it felt really nice to hear the voices of all the five members together, easing with the melody that Big Bang always carries. It's a great representation of being on the road and having the flowers bloom again when they come back, making a lot of fans wait. I really enjoyed it and and have listened to it at least 25 times today. Only 25? Only 25. So why now? (laughs) Just because they're all out in the army? uh, Yeah, right now I feel it's a great song to be released as they're all currently in the army and a lot of us fans are waiting for them to return um, and are happy to see that they're all doing this together and having the song released at this point in time just makes us more i would say complete in the sense that we're we're ready to hear where big bang will be in the the upcoming years my favorite part of the song has to be the big bang from gd Yeah. yeah, it's so it's, it's it's so soothing in itself and like eases into the song and then you hear Top's voice and you like cry a little bit. That, that was all <laughs> I needed. <laughs> yeah, that's all. That's what I needed today. <laughs> but yeah, super excited to hear the hear their voices together again. Oh, yeah. Moving on, let's move into Mama Moo and their song, Starry Night, letting you guys know if the song is Daybok or not. So, Raman, I know you had a chance to kind of digest the lyrics. Did you get a strong meaning or message from this music video? Yeah. And song? The message that comes across for me when listening to Starry Night discusses about when you're feeling the loneliness that you sometimes feel in a relationship. As you look at a starry night, you feel small, you feel empty in this big world, but you're staring at the gaze, right? Of the beautiful stars and you feel connected in some way. Yeah. And which kind of represents the feelings or the lingering feelings that you get from any type of loneliness or 
feeling out of place in a relationship.、Mm-hmm. Another message that I felt that was strong in this music video was the feeling of drunkenness as you share the nights with somebody and you're staring at the stars or feeling encompassed by the shadows of a night. You kind of feel like this irrationality of not thinking straight and、yeah. not seeing what just blows over you in the night. And I feel like they also mentioned this in English lyrics of makes me drunk,、um, sharing these memories with you. Also, Moonbeal mentions, Do you want me to leave? which goes back to the part in a relationship where that's the first reaction you will feel when it comes to loneliness or feeling out of place. You question. Whether you want to leave or whether your、hmm. significant other wants you to leave. Feeling encompassed by the shadows and the emptiness of looking into、mm. the stars. Yeah. It's almost overwhelming. Yeah,、right? exactly. Overwhelming in the sense you feel so small. Yes.、Um, It's funny. Yeah. So, for those of you who have studied like philosophy、mm-hmm. and philosophy of art in college, which is like all like、mm-hmm. two of you, and I, I'm raising my hand. <laughs> like, there's this. I took art history too. Oh, really? Yeah. Did you? Yeah, I did. I did. Oh, okay. I did take art history. So,、yeah. Yeah. There's the Kantian、um, definition of, or the aesthetic of art.、Yep. And that's this feeling of like being completely overwhelmed、mm-hmm. of the state of being and being like, I am so insignificant of this natural force of like phenomena, right? Of the world.、Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what I get、yeah. with this. Feeling yeah, of yeah, emptiness,、definitely. and I—it feels so surreal、mm-hmm. when you look at the visuals of this music video. Oh yes, right. Like there、mm-hmm. are elements which are very realistic. So often in K-pop, we're in that doctored music set, and it never goes outside. At least never the real outside. In this, they went、mm-hmm. out on location to these beautiful landscapes in、yeah. New Zealand, right? And、mm-hmm. there are in these landscapes where you feel very insignificant in. The big expanse, right, of these、mm-hmm. you know panoramic views that they're seeing. Yep. And、exactly. there are moments where they look up at the moon and at the stars, and the moon is hyper exaggerated, right? Like、Super、the moon、bad. never looks that big in the sky. No, no, no. But no, it's it that feeling of surrealness, right? It's that has aesthetic、mm-hmm. of Kantian art, right?、Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, for like, sure. Well, I like how how highbrow do we have to be <laughs> to talk about this? But no, no. I, I was just gonna mention about Starry Night, Vincent Van Gogh,、mm-hmm. like the. Colors. Oh、um, yeah. The village is all paint. Like the village is painted in dark colors, right? And everything's brightly lit. It kind of gives you a sense of comfort,、uh, but there's a lot of emotion involved. Like there's a lot of like. Ooh,、ah, That's a really good、feeling. example. Yeah, but also like yeah, kind of going just back to surrealism. Surrealism is like. The release of creative potential、uh-huh. of the unconscious mind, and we're getting that with Mama Moo in this case. Yeah, in this case, and also I feel like it's a great way because we didn't see Mama Moo as this type of color. Like, yeah, this is different, right? We were unconscious about this. It's, it's pretty creative in itself, right?、Um, wow, it, it all goes back to Starry Night.、Uh-huh. But yeah, like surrealism. Coming from the word itself, the whole ambiance, environment, but also with like Mama Moo's new color, like you, I, I didn't think Mama Moo can pull this off in their new music style. So it's very fresh. And I'm so used to thinking of Mama Moo as "Yes, I am,"、mm-hmm. right?、Yes. That was so bold and colorful, yeah, and stuff that I really love K-pop for. And then we also had their "Paint、yeah. Me" song, right?、Mm-hmm. And that music video I immediately fell asleep to,、mm-hmm. but it had a very strong contrast between you know the black and white、mm-hmm. and the color, and like okay, they're trying to be very bold. And, and these、yes. palettes, right? And this, it's like okay,、yes. it's a very surreal, overwhelming blend、oh. from the landscapes that they're in. Yeah. yeah, don't get me started about their outfits. It's, I love their outfits. This is the instant thing I loved about like the. No,、colors. let me get you started about the outfits. <laughs> Tell me、yeah. about the outfits, Robin.、Yeah. I must say, love, love, love them. Bold red, all different type of patterns in itself.、Um, there's also a lot of white color of. Color T-shirts、uh-huh. they wear or like tops that they wear. Sorry, for me like when I was just looking at what they were wearing, I was like, I want, I want to wear that. <laughs> Going in the beach and just looking all pretty, but like each setting reflects and complements really well with their outfits that they're wearing. Yeah, that's a good point. I I almost feel like、yeah. I'm I'm looking at like a. 
uh, Urban Outfitters catalog or or something yeah. along those lines. I mean, this is more for like the hip mm-hmm. millennials. I'm not yes. in that category. That's okay. But it's something with like a really heavy Instagram filter on it, and they're wearing these like fashionable cutting edge outfits, and or like they're going to Coachella, right? Like they're going to the yeah going <laughs> the to summer Coachella. concert, mm-hmm. and, and that's kind of what I get from from their looks in this, and they pull it off really well. Yeah. There are moments where it seems like the color saturation is artificial mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. both themselves yeah. and the environment in the setting. Yeah. But there are times when I'm not sure. Like, is that really how it is? Yeah, kind of. Like, does the dawn really glisten like that, or like I don't know if it's her shirt looking different. I don't know. But, no, I totally get that, like, I do see a lot of more saturation, but in the sense that they're also in New Zealand, I've never been there, I don't know what it looks like, so... Well, now you do. I, now I do. <laughs> now I'm. Now my next trip is going to New Zealand. No, yep. I swear, yep. like, and I mentioned on today's <laughs> K-pop chat, like, this should be, like, yeah. the Board of Tourism, or, like, the City yeah. the Chamber of Commerce from New Zealand. It's like, <laughs> look, look at this music video. <laughs> you guys should come here. Yeah, there's, like, one scene I just remember briefly of, like, pink flowers. Uh-huh. I feel just pink flowers. Right. It's very pretty. Like, I want to go there, like, for sure. Yeah. And it, yeah. we would be remiss if we didn't mention their hair. Like, I feel like they each uh-huh. redid yes. their hair so well. Um Solar is mm-hmm. like Khaleesi coming to New Zealand or like it's like the, <laughs> you know, like her platinum blonde look. Yeah, it is definitely platinum blonde. Yeah, I'll, uh, although like mm-hmm. as much as I love the blonde looks, it, it's almost a little too blonde on Solar. Like I, I think maybe uh, just because mm-hmm. of her really pale complexion yep. and the like platinum blonde hair, mm-hmm. I wonder if they're a different mm-hmm. color would have looked better. Yeah, uh, when I think of her name of Solar, I'm like usually Sun Energy. Uh huh. So it makes sense. Uh, but there's another member who's also blonde in this uh, comeback, Wein, if I'm pronouncing her name right. Our, our listeners will tell us if we're wrong. Uh, <laughs> forgive me. Yeah, I her hair was not as strong. Yeah, that's, that's, but, that's um, a good blonde, I think. It's a good blonde, yeah. And it looked really it's cute not so on that, that <laughs> length on her. I thought it looked really good. Yeah, yeah, it's a good length, short short length. Yes. The other member is Moonbule. Uh, she has a bit of orange hair. And that was very vibrant. Yeah, very vibrant. And soft a bit. And so- maybe depending on the scenery she was in. Yeah. Um, a bit soft. Oh, sorry if I mispronounce it. Wasa? She has black hair. But it complements her really well. Yeah, it's a good... Yeah, I think so. She's, she's rocking it. She's keeping it going. Keeping it she's, real. She's killing it. Yes. Moving on to the choreo. I will confess that I actually forgot there was even dancing and choreography in this just because I was like so mm-hmm, taken mm-hmm. in by the setting that they're mm-hmm. in and the song itself. But wh- what did you think of the, the choreography, Robin? I thought it was good. I'm not completely like amazed. Uh-huh. Like I could see myself dancing to this like at the club, but goes well with the melody of the song. Like very flowy, a lot of arm and hand snapping. I noticed like arm movement and then there's like a lot of, oh, uh, sorry, not hand snap, snapping, finger snapping. Mm. Um, that'd be kind of, that would kind of hurt if you did hand snapping, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but it goes really well with the nice wave kind of feel mm-hmm. of the song with the, it being at the beach, uh, with water and grassy cliffs. I, I mean, I think it complemented well, like it did well, but I was like amazed, like, oh, this is like the trend. So moving on to the audio, the song itself, Uh, our junior editor Michaela said, quote, Sorry Night falls short because of Moonbeal's forced rap and lack of vocal improvisations, which are a major part of Mama Moo's color. Wow. Michaela should be a music critic. Yes. But that's a great point. I, these girls are known for being stronger divas. They're not going to be soft and aggio all the time, right? They have these strong vocal improvisations. In this case, according to Michaela, it was just a little mixed. What do you think? Um, definitely this song shows a new color of Mama Moo. It's, it's different. I didn't like it at first, the audio, the song itself. Uh, I was more amazed by the visuals, and, uh, the scenery, their outfits. But I just gave it a second listen. And I started to like it a bit more. I started to see more of the different color that it brought to Mama Moo. I do like how Mama Moo is definitely not like always aegyo. They're kind of like badass. 
and get a vibe of like strong, vibrant voices as well. Th their voices are pretty distinct. Mm -hmm. I like that. And after giving it more of a listen and understanding the lyrics, kind of come to admire this song a bit more than I did from the original first listen that I had when it came out. Yeah, I would categorize the song as a power ballad. Yeah, power ballad. Right? That's good. It's got the upbeat beat. Mm. Right, it's your four on the floor, yep. almost tropical house, but it's your yes. your house music, right? With very strong reverbery yeah. soundscapes, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of people have pointed this out. It is so much like Robin Schulz's remix of A Prayer in C. Oh. And that song ch charted really well in the Bay Area, so a lot of Bay Area yep. listeners will know. But it's like they copied mm. <laughs> or taken strong uh, inspiration yeah. from the guitar loop of that song and the beat mm. and the tempo and they just adjusted it slightly and they used it here Thanks for mentioning that. Yeah, I can kind of see that now, listening to it. Yeah, and there are moments where I get this from other Western mm. pop, but like singers like mm -hmm. Natasha Bedingfield or uh, Iona Lewis mm -hmm. or like Kelly Clarkson, they do a lot of singing in their songs where it's a call mm, and a response. Call, mm, it's not yeah. like they're asking a question and they're answering it, but it feels like in terms of the, how they sing it and deliver it, it oh, almost so feels that way. Down. So it's like, da 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 So it, it feels like it's responding mm -hmm. to each phrase. And I kind of get that with the lyrics mm -hmm. and the delivery mm -hmm. of the melody in this song by Mama Moo. It's so funny because you listen to a lot of Electro mm -hmm. House today, and especially for Western like top 40 charting songs, it's almost become cliche. And a lot of Western Euro trash Electro mm -hmm. House music to have really breathy vocals. Mm -hmm. I could hear the instrumental of this track and imagine breathy vocals from another like top 40 song on top of it. But in this case, Mama Mood so said, no, we're gonna continue to deliver our stronger message. Mm -hmm. We're gonna show that we're in command here and deliver that same Mama Mood brand. And that's what I really applaud this track and beat for. I think you kind of like nailed it in the head with how Mama Moo's comeback is something vibrant in itself and colorful as well as bold and it's, it kind of brings how they are as a group like you know how you mentioned that a lot of edm and house songs are very similar and sound the same well i wouldn't say that they all sound the same i mean this mm -hmm. definitely takes inspiration from like a very slower tempo yeah. like trance music in terms of how reverberate um, it sounds and it's got that mm -hmm. very nice weaving in of the acoustic sample of the guitar and strong vocals so I don't know I, maybe it's predictable yeah that's, that's a good way and formulaic yeah. in some ways it's a good way to put it predictable I, I didn't feel like this song was exactly predictable in, in the sense like I thought it was going to be like very heavy on the on the instrumentals but I felt it was a good balance of more of the voice or the vocals of Mama Moo. And maybe that's that's because they also have very strong voices. I'm mm -hmm. trying to go back to like when they came out with like Mr. Ambiguous, like their voices were like amazing. Um, but like it wasn't too much of an instrumental heavy song. Like that was very house. Um, like I what I mostly remember when I think of the song is their voices. With like the instrumental coming right. alongside it. I, I've gotta confess that mm -hmm. the guitar hook was a big part of the song identity for me. Like 
I'm not gonna remember the song so much for the vocals, honestly. <laughs> and the vocals are a big part of it. Yeah, yeah. What, what Mama Moo delivers, but it, it is the beat that really makes me love this song. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's not the most intellectually highbrow or stimulating track, but it's catchy, at least for my yeah, judging paradigm. Yeah, I can see that. So final scores. Let's start with the concept. One being the lowest, five being the highest. What did you think of the visuals, the message, the overall look? I would say for me, the concept of 4.5. Wow, that's really highly. Yeah. That's really high. I love the video, like where it was shot. Um, also, their outfits. Yes. Love it. And they filled those outfits well. Yeah, I they mean, did. it's one just to look good yeah. and just be a doll. But they also met the character, you know? Yeah, I agree. That was, you know, desired to, to fill that role. So, yes. Yes. 4.5, I think, is still a little high for me. So, I think I would give <laughs> it a 3.9 for okay. the concept. Okay. How about the audio? One being the lowest, five being the highest. Audio for me, I'm going to say 3.5. Mm-hmm. It was like originally I didn't like it, but then I grown to like it. I definitely do feel like it shows a different side of Mama Moo, but I don't think it shows shows a strongest side of Mama Moo. Hmm. Like what they're really known yeah. for. Yeah. No, I, I hear you on that. I, I get that. Yeah. It, it almost feels like the music itself was like the fifth member you know like mm-hmm. it, it sort mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. took away the spotlight from them yeah a little too much but when i listen to k-pop i listen for that <laughs> overall package yeah <laughs> and it's the instrumental that i i am always looking for as that extra member of the group so mm. i was close to giving this a four but after listening reading and revisiting a prayer and see i was like you know what i thought that song did it the same thing just a little mm-hmm. better <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Uh, i give this song by mama moo a 3.9 oh well 3.9 again okay yeah. cool all right on the whole taking all of this into account i'm looking at the concept the audio the message the choreo the beautiful colors and outfits <laughs> mm-hmm. is this song daybox or, or not, not? okay Robin. Do I think this song is Daybuck or not? For me, I would say not. Oh! Yeah, for me, it wasn't. I didn't feel it shows the strongest side again of Mama Moo, uh. but it is a good song, but not like absolutely amazing song that I was like, yeah, this is Mama Moo. It's just a good different side of Mama Moo. That's why I chose not. Yeah. After all the good things you were saying about this, and then you say it's not. <laughs> I know. I, I mean, I do like it as like overall very different. Like, I like the song, but I don't know if it's like amazing. Like, is it my go-to? Probably not. Oh, that hurts me to hear. Uh, that, that, I don't know. That's how I rate my day box because like, yeah, that's amazing. It's on my playlist, but it's not. Thank you, Raman, yeah. for your honest <laughs> feedback. But, 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 Peter, for you, was it Daybok or not? It was Daybok for me, obviously, mm, okay. for all the reasons we have discussed. <laughs> when I listened to the last couple songs, especially Paint Me, like I was waiting for Mama Moo to deliver something I can get hyped about. I was, I was waiting, like, come on, Mama Moo, I know you're gonna do it. Like, give me something good to like react and like and, and discuss on our mm. podcast. And like, there's just the last few songs I just wasn't feeling it. This one came out. I'm like, yes, <laughs> it, it happened. It, like, this is such a day box song. Finally happened. Day box song. So. All right. All right. One, two, oh, Wrapping up our thoughts on Mama Moo's Starry Night. Michaela said, quote, I prefer Rude Boy and Paint Me over Starry Night from this album. And I'm excited to hear the other three parts of the four season project. Solar's blue part give us some awesome breakup anthems. It is a great point that Mikaela brings out. What I also really liked myself was the outro for this music video. So right at the end of the music video of Starry Night, they play parts of Be Calm. And Be Calm is kind of like you were in the slumber from Starry Night, this dream, right? This very surreal dream. And then you're waking up with Be Calm. And I get the sense of the Yellow Flower album as a whole, and Michaela makes reference to this, is that it's going from winter to spring. 
right? So it's that transitional part into spring. That's true. A lot of spring stuff brings a lot of transition type of feelings or change. And this song, Starry Night, is definitely a different type of change for Mama Boo. But not the change that you like. Not the change that I like. I, I, I think it's okay, but I don't think it's amazing. Yeah. But is it Daybok it was, or not? No. <laughs> No. Ouch. No. I think it's terrible. Uh, no. <laughs> okay. So wrapping it up from a Twitter chat today, we had Twitter user Rodri, or Rodri, as you all know, is on our show often, time to time. And Rodri said, in response to this song, he said, quote, It is Daybok for sure. Mama Moo's vocals are always so good. If you know friends who can't get into K-pop because of Aegyo, Mama Moo is the group to show them. It's great pop, very western sounding, and has mature, amazing vocals. Hashtag K-pop chat. Definitely agree on how Mama Moo's vocals are always so good. And also with the part of, if you're trying to show your friends a group that's not super aegyo, definitely show Mama Moo. Mama Moo brings a different type of girl group vibe on the typical cute with a more of, I feel like, a definite strong feeling of confidence and vibrance. And empowerment. I mean, we got that from a lot of the yeah. different songs. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. Tell your friends to listen to K-pop and to listen to K-pop cats, such as the K-pop cast. Yep, it's a great way to be that living room for us to help you appreciate K-pop in different ways. Maybe you've always liked the song, but hopefully we can illustrate new parts and new aspects of the song for you. Signing off, let our listeners know where they can find you online and tell us what was your favorite K-pop beach trip music video. You can find me on Instagram at Bowl of Ramen. And for my favorite K-pop beach music video, I have to say Card Ola Ola. Yeah, that's a good pick. You can find me at DJ Peter Lowe. And I surprised myself with this answer. In the big scheme of all these K-pop beach trip music videos from Hana, Bubble Pop, A Pink, 21, AOA, Card, Winner, Sister, I picked SNSD's Party <laughs> because that one was also so colorful and vibrant and I love their hair <laughs> in, in that really in that concept. Is. So I, I, I surprised myself with that answer because I am not a so one. And I do not like SNSD on many <laughs> things, but they did the beach concept right. We'll catch you all next week and be sure to let us know your answer to this week's question. Uh, just give us a tweet at the K pop cast. All right, see you soon, guys. Bye bye. <laughs>